everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and today we're going to make Luna a new pair of French knickers. Um, we're going to talk about sewing with lace, we're going to talk about how to get the elastic round the waist as well and put a nice little trim on and they've got a little gap at the back here for Luna's tail. So if you would like to have a go at making some French knickers for your Luna then watch along because this is what we're going to be making today. So let's have a talk about fabrics then because this is actually the really nice bit and if we're actually going to be making something really special as you know that I like to try and do if we can um, then I'm a bit of a dilemma as to what I'm actually going to use to, to work with to make my French knickers. So I have traced the pattern out of the book um, and you should do the same and because actually this will help you when you go shopping just to work out how much you need. Um, obviously you could take a measurement with you just of the length there. But also you probably need to know the width of your um or the depth or the yeah the depth is it of the of the fabric as well because some la not laces are all laces aren't all created equally. So I've got a piece of lace here and I can see that that will just fit on the edge there. So when you go in shopping, take that measurement too because you'll need that to know for the width of your lace. Obviously, if you're buying a kit from Cool Crafting and that's available at this web address here, I'll pop that up for you, then it'll already be supplied for you and it'll be a great choice. But if you, there's a lot of laces out there and if you wanted to have a little dabble of and a little choose of something else, then, you know, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Some ways are a little bit more expensive, some ways are a little bit cheaper. So we'll cover both because obviously everybody has a different budget and, it, and if you're making a lot of lunars then um, economy of what you're making is going to be really important so um, trace your pattern off so then you know you've got your width and your depth um, and then if we start off with the most expensive because that's really sweet um, I've actually got this lace here I don't know if you can see that I need to put something behind it don't I um, put this white behind it and hopefully you can see that so this lace is one that I bought um, from Sew so Wardrobe in Ashby de la Zouch, which unfortunately has closed its doors to um, in-person sales. Um, it's a very, very fine embroidered edge on the edge here, and then it's set onto tulle. So it's really, really pretty. Um, and I thought that that would make a lovely Luna pair of French knickers. Little, little sheer, I do agree. They are a little sheer, but the lace on there is absolutely fabulous. Um, so what I was thinking of doing was perhaps mounting the lace onto this, which is a kind of power net. So there's no stretch to it at all. And you'd get this online at some um, bra suppliers. I think, I don't know that it's called power net, um, but it's it's like a reinforced net. It's a polyester, um, but it's a reinforced net that goes on the. Um, it's like a non non stretch bra cup interfacing or um, layer that just is used just to add support. Because sometimes with when you're working with tool, you do get a bit of a stretch on there, and so you want to minimise that obviously when you're working with bras. But what I thought was that that would actually go underneath there. And if I then layer up the edge of the underlayer just with the upturn in the edge scalloped edge, that would actually make a really nice and not too sheer French knicker, but still keep keep the fabric intact. So that was one option. And this wasn't that expensive. Um, I want to say it was about two pounds fifty for half a metre, so five pounds a metre. Um, you need a little bit because obviously you're going across the edge, but, but you're not You're not gonna need much. So again, it just depends on what, what you're making and what you like, but that, that was just too pretty not, not to show you, not to share it with you. Um, the other option that I've got from my stash is I've got this lace here, which is probably the one that I'm probably gonna use. Um, because this one I don't think needs to be um, interfaced or, or not interfaced um interlined with something else because i think that'll just be once that's gathered and that's on that'll be just a nice little lace french knicker there and look nice um the other thing that you could do um and this one was just in in a stash that i bought um i think if you go to a charity shop or something like that you might be able to find some lace like this um maybe it's on something already you could also thrift a neck curtain that would be another way of getting some um fine mesh um 
for, for, for making your lunar lappings. Um, and that wouldn't be dissimilar, I suppose, really, to something like this, which is that um, interlining fabric for the, um, for the bras that I bought. Um, alternatively, and this might be something that this is um, an old underskirt off a, from a from a alteration that I had to do for somebody. Um, it has got a little bit of lace on it, but not not enough to make. Um, see, that's always the same with white, isn't it? White always whites out. Um, but it has got a nice little lace trim to it already. And there you can see that. So, so have a little scoop around charity shops. Give it a good, you know, just give it a wash, and and then there's there's oodles of, of fabric there that's that's really going to be really well to use. Has got a little bit of stretch to it, but that's not going to concern me at all. I'd just use a stretch needle in my machine, my sewing machine, and that should make up really nicely and just make a really nice practical pair of. Um, um, French knickers, not quite as special as using the, the, the lace, I agree, but it'll still make a very, very nice pair of French knickers for somebody. But as I say, that's an off cut off the bottom of a of a very long underskirt. And look, I've even got a little bow that I can use just for the decoration at the end as well. So maybe, oh, I don't know, decisions, decisions. The other thing that I've got, and I've just dropped it on the floor, is I've got some of this little lace trims here. So I've got this beautiful little one here. And I've got this eyelash lace that you'll recognise from the bottom of Daisy's twirling dress that I made as well. Um, both, again, really lovely and can be used to decorate. So if you've got a fine cotton lawn or you've got um, an old bed sheet you wanted to use or a pillowcase, then you could always edge the bottom layer of your... French knickers with the lace along the edge there and that would just elevate it too so again just you know just have a look in your charity shop bags and see what you're thrifting because quite often we can get some really good fabrics um, that we can use and, and make something really truly special so I don't know what am I going to use I want to use this but I'm worried it's going to make the video too complicated for everybody so, so maybe we have to have a bit of a another thing about working with lace maybe that I can follow on afterwards with just to give you some tips and tricks as to when you're working with with this kind of fabric and this is perhaps more like the type of thing that you'd probably use okay we'll go with this we'll go with this um we've got to choose something we'll go with that we'll try and make the video um not not as um, lengthy as often mine are and we'll go with that and then I'll at some stage I'll do another video on how to work with this kind of lace if you want to be really special. If you think I've missed a trick and you think that you would prefer to have seen something made out of this fabric and then interlined with the other. So a bit, little bit more of an advanced um, sewing tutorial on, on also along with this type of lace, then just leave me a, um, a comment down below saying that you want to work with the, with the embroidered, an embroidered tool instead and I will I'll look at doing that and bump it up my list a little bit more because I think they would look really special. But as I say, I just want to make this 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 easy and, and um, accessible for as many people as possible. So, OK, enough of the waffling, Claire. Let's get on with making. OK, so we've traced off our pattern. We've made sure that we've copied across our um, notches as well. We've got one at the front and two at the back just here and your pattern can be found in book one and it's on page, oops, just quickly find that for you because I think it does help sometimes if you know exactly where to go to. The French knickers are on page 46 and the pattern is on, oops, there we go, on page 126. And there's just one pattern piece for this so that makes it nice and easy, so, so, we, so we think. And we just need to work out, first of all, which is the right side and the wrong side of our lace. So I think I've got mine upside down at the moment. So let's just turn that the right way around. And you can just generally tell because the, the texture on one is slightly nicer than the other. And this one's got just a slight little sheen to some of the threads that isn't present on the back. So that's why I'm going to just turn that over. And just make sure if there's an up or a down that you've got that right. And what I'm going to, I'm going to cut these two out separately because we and um, if you've watched the video on the boxer shorts, I talked quite a lot and hopefully it wasn't too boring about mirroring your pattern pieces, because when we're when we've got a pattern piece that isn't symmetrical, 
so we can see the front of the pattern is lower than the, the, the back and also this scoop here at the back is deeper and, and um, longer than the scoop at the front. We know we have to cut one that's that way orientation with the, your pattern writing up and we also know the next one you have to cut, you have to cut the other way up and do a mirrored copy. If you just move your pattern from here to here, it won't be right. You'll have one piece that's the right way round and one piece that's the wrong way round of your lace. So that is, I know I keep going on about this and I'm really sorry if it's boring for you, but it's really important. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is just fold my pants in half and get, a, get an edge there because that then can give me a grain line so that I can match that up. Because if we look at this lace here, we've got some big flowers along here. And we've also got a different bit of scalloped edge along the edge here. So we've got some little dots here, little holes. And here we've got um, some leaves or some swirls. So I need to just choose what I'm going to have as that centre edge, just so that it then makes my lace balanced and it matches it up. So if I go in between these pieces here, we should be able to pick up the two flowers then for making our piece our uh, um, French stickers. Now the next thing I'm also going to do is we've got a scalloped edge where it goes up and down like this. The other thing I'm going to do is on the lace edge is I'm going to place that lace edge onto the top where the scallop is, is at the highest and that will then just also make sure it's right. So I'm placing this on this the middle of this scallop here and on the top bit and once we've done that we can then find our pins and the first thing I'm going to do is pin that section down. And you just pin as normal, even though it's quite a loose weave, and this might be the first time you've worked with lace, it's actually surprisingly easy. Now, it's easy for me to say that, isn't it, at this stage, before everything's gone catastrophically wrong, but hopefully everything's going to go smoothly. But just make sure you pin so that you've got your 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 drawn edge of your pattern pieces at the top of all of those scallops and just make sure that it's all nice and straight and as I say we're going to cut one out this way and one out the other way the, the pins might feel a little bit loose in there but just take your time with it and everything should just pin down just normally anyway and it's nice to be working with such a luxury fabric as well isn't it actually and if you wanted to do a two layer one you can do um, and I've said I'm going to work on that in the other, but say you had a black lace and you wanted to put something, say, magenta or, or bright pink or something behind or, you know, with this white lace, we wanted to put another colour, maybe a peachy colour un underneath it. Then just cut out both pieces on your fabric, but you just need to be aware of if the lining fabric underneath is going to fray, that'll have to be neatened before you put it onto your scalloped edge. So just do yourself a either a zigzag hem on your lining fabric, the, the fabric underneath, and then lay it on your lace and then just attach the two together with some stitches. Along here you just machine sew and you can use a different colour thread in your bobbin as is in the top of your machine and that also can give you a really nice effect when you've got a couple of colours that you're working with. So many things to say and to share with you. Right, okay, so that's my first one put on. And then because my wrist is still hurting me using scissors, I'm going to use my rotary cutter to cut out. So I won't cut out this lace edge here because we want to preserve these scallops because that's going to give us a really nice finish on our, on our French knickers. So I'm just going to go up here, taking my time nice and gently, nice and steady. Trying not to take anything off. That's the only trouble with using a rotary cutter is it's, it can be possible to make your pattern every t um, thinner, smaller every time you use it. So just be aware that you're not shaving a little bit off your pattern as you go. Otherwise, every so often you're going to need to just stop and retrace your pattern. Now, if you're... If your lace, so you can see here, this lace extends over the top and I could leave that if I wanted to. If I think if it was further down and if my lace was only to here and I got a scalloped edge like this, I probably would leave the lace on the top of the pattern piece. In this case, I'm going to take it off because we're going to fold it under to, to, to accommodate for the elastic. 
but I, there's a different method. So when I'm doing the other pants, if, if you decide you want the more advanced way of doing the French knickers, then we will talk about that. But just for now, I'm going to take off this layer. I'm not going to throw that away because if we were edging something in the future, we could always use this to edge something. It's not long enough to do the, the bottom, but we could we could find something to edge that with. So I do, do save my, my off cuts. So the other thing that we've got on here is we have got some um, notches as well. Now, it's not so easy to put notches into your lace. So what we're going to do is we are going to do together a tailor's tie. So let's just take this out for the moment. And I'm going to layer those two pieces up and I'll show you how we do tailor's ties together. But before we move on to the next one, I'm just going to put a pin in here. Just going through a couple of times. Give it a twist if it doesn't want to go through straight away. Your pin just twist the, twist the end and that will go through. Because that's going to mark what is my top side and we need to know what the top side is of our fabric that we're working with. So that's one piece cut out. Let's put that to one side. And then so following our rules, make sure that we've got our, fab our fabric the right way up again. I'm now going to flip my pattern over and I'm going to find the same point. Now this is the trouble with working with lace. If I put my pattern piece here it's off the end of my pattern there there's not enough there so what I have to do is I have to move along and find the next time that that pattern repeat is which is here and then layer it up again obviously if you're not bothered about the repeat or your pattern isn't as big a repeat as this then it's not a problem but for me I'm going to lose this amount of the fabric that I've bought so you do have to bear that in mind as well when you are choosing your fabric and and buying it your lace so let's just pin this one on make sure we've got it nice and straight and that the scallops are all at the right point and then I'm just going to cut this one out as well just exactly the same way so let me do that and I'll come back to you. So we have to do a couple of things differently when we're working with lace. Um, it doesn't fray per se, but you might find that over time some of these edges do become a little bit rougher. So we do need to just be aware of that. But at the moment, all we're going to do is go straight to sewing because um, unlike with the boxes where we've got the cotton and we could press it, the lace doesn't press so well so therefore we're just going to get straight on with working with it and see what we can do so the first thing that we're going to do is i've got both of my right sides marked here with a with a red pin and we can see that we've got the small curve together and the furthest curve the deeper curve is at the back there so we know we've got two mirrored copies and the first thing we're going to do is fold these over the top so the right side so we've got right sides together and then we're going to sew a seam down here now because we now know then which is our right side of our fabric we can take the pin out that we've already put in and we can use that it's only a little small seam so we don't need to worry so that's one and then we'll fold this one over as well so that we've got those two seams together this is going to give us the two legs for our french knickers Okay, so there we go, we've got two there. And now let's go to the sewing machine. Okay, so I've got my machine set up with um, white thread and I've also got my ordinary presser foot on here. Um, if you are working with fabrics that are stretchy, you might like to use a walking foot. Now I've spoken about walking feet before um, and they have these extra set of feed dogs that move up and down as you're working with the fabrics. And what that does is it just helps the fabric move through equally because they grip on and move the fabric from the top as well as the bottom so that's very good if you've got very uh, if you're working with a satin perhaps for your french knickers and two layers of satin together i'd probably put my walking foot on they're not cheap but they're worth every penny okay so we're just going to now sew down these two seams here quarter of an inch seam allowance and we are going to just sew as normal put our needle in the work Take our pin out as soon as we feel it's in the way, because so don't sew over our pins. And then we're just going to back tack, just as we would do normally, perhaps for a little bit longer, just in case when you're back tacking, you're in one of the holes, you just want enough stitches to go back and be able to actually anchor your laces together, your sides of your lace together. And then we're just going to sew straight through. 
Um, just so that you know, I've got a Schmetz Microtex needle in my machine. Let me show you those. They are my favourite to use. This is what they, they come like. So that's the Schmetz Microtex needle that I like to use. Um, they come in various sizes. This is either a 70 or an 80. I think it might be an 80, this one is. But, it, but if you're using very fine fabrics, all the satin, I would go down to a 70. Oops, making a noise while I put that away, sorry. Um, but yeah, so because it, it has a really sharp point, so it, it, it goes through these fibres really nicely because sometimes on some laces, they're quite dense. So just, just again, just a couple of tips just for going through, but it's just ordinary thread that I'm using. So coming down to the end here, so I'm just going to back tack. And if you're not careful, your lace will try and bunch up like mine has just done. But we can pull that straight in a second. Let me just get some scissors so we can just trim off these threads. Still haven't found my snips yet. I will do. They'll be, be buried under a pile of something somewhere. Okay, so we've got a nice little seam down there. And what I am going to do is I am going to zigzag these seams as well, just to try and give it a little bit of help so that it doesn't, doesn't fray. It shouldn't do, but it's just a belt and braces thing. But before I do that, so that we're sewing economically with our time, I'm just going to do the other, the other leg as well. I'm just making sure I'm into some solid net before I reverse. little reverse on that as well so they're not going to come undone while they're being played with okay so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to oh we didn't do the tailor's tax did we let's do the tailor's tax so it would have been better to have done the tailor's tax while it was out flat but we can still work with this so don't worry okay so the other thing you could do is you could do a little chalk pencil mark if you wanted to where your um, marks are the right side on the right side so this is a thin one so you could just do that and if you've got a nice little mark in pink or in in a so you could just do a little mark like that just to mark it um tailor's tags we need an alternative different color thread choose this nice bright pink hopefully that'll show up nicely on the on the camera is anybody else shouting at me saying, Claire, you were going to do the tailor's tax and you haven't. Okay. So I use tailor's tax quite a lot for marking all kinds of fabrics. They are very useful for putting pattern markings onto your clothing. And I think if you've seen Alfie's shirt, then you'll have seen that I use tailor's tax for that. There we go, we've got threaded. So I've just got, need a double, double thickness of thread. Just put the ends together, but I'm not going to put a knot in. It's equal. Then we're going to make sure we've got the right piece of pattern against our pattern piece, and we have just there. And then all I'm going to do is where that notch is through the pattern piece is I am just going to take a little stitch alongside it without pattern piece flicking up and put it through. And then I normally go at a right angle. So one east to west and one's north to south and pull it through. And then what you do is you, pull, you snip through the loops and through the thread. And then when you pull off your pattern piece, you've got these fuzzy threads that just tell you where you want to be. So let's just do that on the other piece because that's got to have. So make sure you're matching the right curve to the right piece when you do this because you've got one curve that's deeper than the other. And all it is is just ways of marking your fabric so that you can then match up those match points. So again, that's those two marked on those two pieces. And obviously, again, we can see this mirroring in action where we've got the two bits that are going to match together. So if I turn these over now, I'm going to need some more thread in a moment. But then if you match up the pattern curve and then obviously if you were doing this on it I'd do this in the on the flat if I were you first before you do what I do and I've sewn the legs up I just forgot let's get some more thread 
So this is your, how your tailor tattoo looks through your, through your fabric. And because you've cut through all of those strands, when you lift your pattern piece off, those threads just stay behind. If they don't, if they feel like they're going to pull, just put your finger on them just while you pull your pattern piece off. And there you've got your threads. If you're going through two layers at once, ease the pattern pieces apart and then just snip between the, the two layers of fabric. I'm, I'm sure I've demonstrated this to you before, so you may already know about these. But um, yeah, I'll do another, do, I'll do a skill builder at some stage on, on these. If those videos have been popular as well. I think for people who are, so if you haven't seen my skill builder set of videos yet, then have a little look at those. I know some of them have started off quite basic, but it was aimed at beginners. But then these tips do help improve us as well. So let's go again here. We've done the lower one. So I know that from the past that my these, these two marks weren't quite big enough for my ta my rabbit's tail at the back. So I'm just going to give it a little bit more on these ones. So a little bit. So I'm going a little bit higher than the the top mark, just so that I've got a little bit more room. And these threads, once you've sewn the seam together, these threads just pull out just really easily. So they're really good to work with. So that's those two marks on there. Let me just show you those. So one mark just here and one mark just there. And then we've got the mark on the front so we can see those. And I'll come back to you when I've done these. So with our pattern pieces all marked up, I'm now going to go on to the zigzag stitch. And I do like a setting, um, a stitch width of 3.5 and a stitch length of 1.5. I'm just going to put our machine, our needle into our machine, and we're just going to sew down this seam that we've just sewn between the legs. I haven't reversed on that because I, I, you can do, but I just think it's just going to possibly eat up the fabric a little bit. So it's enough just to hold it together and just give it a neatened appearance. Let's just do with the other one just quickly. If you've got an overlocker, of course, you can overlock this instead of doing this. If not, then just you could always, if you're hand stitching, you could always just over do a little over stitch like that, which is all, all that's happening really. So before we do anything else with these now, we're just going to go and neaten the edges for when we sew them together. So it'll already be neatened. I'm just going to keep the threads of the tailor's tacks out of the way whilst I'm doing this because I don't want to have those tangled in with the rest of the sewing. So my machine's on a 3.5 width for these zigzags and it's on a 1.5 length. Try not to pull on the lace too much because I don't want to stretch it out of shape. There we go. Just, just push the threads of the tailor's tacks back behind you so you don't get those tangled in. If you don't think that your lace is going to fray then you don't need to do this bit I would just go straight on to the next step which will be constructing and putting the two sides together but with this one I'm not sure so I thought I'd just show you just in case yours is the, the kind of lace that might um, fray or if you're using a cotton or a cotton lawn then you will need to do this time around the curve. Remember to put your needle in your work just to anchor it as you're moving it around so you don't get any jigs in your stitches. We'll just sweep those threads to the back. And 
so then the next thing that we're going to do now so we've got two two legs here with our seams on the outside and if we put those together we can see we've got one one tailor's tack here and two there so that we know that these aren't the right orientation at the moment so what we're going to do is take one of them and turn it inside out well they're actually the right way round but the other way round and then when we take the one that we've just turned round and pop it inside the other leg and we match those sewn seams first at the right point make sure that we've got the sewn seam bit together that's just there I'm going to pin it from the inside because we will sew it from the inside and then next thing we're going to match up is our two single notches that we've marked with our tailor's tacks so they're nice and clear to be able to be seen The other thing as well is if you're using coloured pins on, on these as well rather than the whites because you can see the white heads don't show up so well but the coloured pin heads show up really well so that's another good tip for, for sewing with lace as well to, so that you can see where you are. And again we're ma we've matched up the centre front seam, now we're going to match up the, the top of the curve on the centre back, make sure that's all lined up and then we've got our tailor's tacks that line up too. Just keep your threads out of the way for a minute or two. And I'm going to put a red pin in to say to stop. I know I've got red pins down there, but I'm going to remember. And then another one here. Now, the other thing to remember is that I did move my my tailor's tack slightly further apart than I had done on the boxer shorts, just to allow a little bit more room for, for Luna's tail, so that's all fine. And so now I know where I'm going to stop and start between. I'm going to just, shall I pull those out? I oh, will leave them in now. I'll show you how you can pull those out afterwards. Okay. So back to the machine, change it back to a straight stitch, just a 2.2 .2 stitch length because we're on the construction and then we're just going to just start sewing. I'm going to go backwards and forwards just here, a little bit longer than I would have done and needle down in my work to anchor it. And I'm just going to sew down to this first pin first, so just hold your threads out of the way for your tailor's tack. Just do your backwards and forwards. Take your pin out, needle up, let's cut our threads just there. And now because we're at that point now, I'm going to take out those tailor's tacks because we've finished with that now on both sides. If your tailor's tack threads get stuck, those didn't, but if they do, just trim off one side close to the stitches and then pull from the other side and you'll be able to then release that stitch. It just means that the needles pierced the thread that you were working with, the thread that you'd use for your stitch. Then just manipulate your lace so that you've got a, a clear section in front of the presser foot. Set your machine up again for your quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to take the pin out before I start stitching. Hold on to my threads and a couple of stitches forward and a couple back needle into my work just to anchor it and then each time we're just trying to move the lace so we've just got like a clear inch in front of the pressure press foot. Don't worry about all of this bunching up because it's such a small area you're working with. Just gently just coax your fabric so that it goes into a straight line for you. Get close to your pins, take your pins out, hold everything still, nice and steady. It's not a time for zooming on these kind of curves. Coming up to this tailor's tack here, we're going to go straight through that one because that was just a marking one. I'll take the pin out at the top here. And reverse at the top there just to hold those stitches. Needle up. And we'll trim our threads. So if we take out, now that we've finished working with the tailor's tacks, we can pull these out. They should just pull straight out. If they don't, I'll show you what to do. So far, so good. They are handy just to know how to do those. Um, and I do I do use tailor's tacks. Oh, so you've got one that's got stuck there. So I'll show you how to do that one in a minute. So this, So one of these threads here has got stuck. 
So it's this one here. So that means that, that the machine has gone through the thread. But if you just take one end, because I can, I can show you that's, that's, you know, it's kind of tucked on there. It's not, it's not coming off. If you take one of your scissors and just trim one end close to the stitches, and then just give it a pull, it just comes straight away. It just It's just because the, the sewing machine needle has pierced the, your stitching thread through the middle of that tacking thread. So there we go, we've got our, oh, we've got chalk mark there, it needs to come off, hopefully it will do. And then, it will do when it gets washed anyway. And then what we do then is we can just turn these out the right way, and there we've got two lovely little legs with a scalloped edge on the bottom of our lace. If you want to, and I'm going to, you know that I've said before, sometimes these don't, these seams can stick up into the middle when you, the character's wearing the, the legs. Can you see how that seam allowance wants to stick up? I'm just going to put a few stitches on it just to hold it down because I think it looks a lot neater if that is just held down. So I can do it on the machine. Just go forward and back. As I say, I'm just stitching that seam allowance down to the leg seam, to the leg fabric. Just trim, make sure you've got all of your ends trimmed off. You don't want any loose threads around. It's all about a lovely finish, isn't it? And then again with the other one, I've just got that one just to sew down as well. So let me just sew that one down quickly. And I think these little finishing touches might take just a few minutes. I mean, if you can't manipulate it under your machine very easily, then don't forget you can always just hand sew these. And actually on the boxes, I did just hand sew them shut. So just a couple of stitches. Hand sew them down, sorry, not hand sew them shut. Just because it's, it was just fiddlier on the, that fabric and it was a thicker fabric. The machine didn't like it very much, whereas laces quite a lot thinner isn't it okay so we have our little french knickers and we know that the seam at the front is lower than the seam at the back so we know this is our front and we've got two beautiful flowers there matching and all our lace is matching as well there we go okay and then what we're going to do now is we are going to fold over the one centimeter now because this fabric isn't going mm, let's have a think I'm going to zigzag around the top first because then I think I can just fold it over the once rather than because lace doesn't want to want to cooperate very much sometimes it's a bit bouncy because of the polyester content in it so I'm going to just put start at the back here and I've got my stitch again on a 3.5 width and a 1.5 length I'm just going to whip round the top here. Needling my work while I'm manipulating. Just roll your fabric forward towards you as you go. if you actually stop when you're on a zag when you're out out of the fabric so just just press your foot down again and just move it along so that you're in your fabric when you're stopping and changing any direction So now what I'm going to do is turn this head down about a centimetre. Where's my seam gauge? That's here. There's a one centimetre allowance been made anyway for the hem. And then I'm going to make sure I pin this in the direction that I'm going to be sewing it, which is that way. So I'm going to start with the front and back seams first. One centimetre. Mm -hmm. 
So this needs to be um, wide enough that you can get your elastic through. So if um, my elastic is half a centimetre wide, so that should be enough to go through this channel here with a safety pin attached to it just to help it along its way. So just make sure that if your elastic for some reason is any bigger than that, that you make allowance so that you can use the right. Yeah, you've, got, you've got room to, to thread your elastic through afterwards. And you can guesstimate this if you wanted to, but it's nice if it can be even. Normally we don't notice that it doesn't quite look even until after we've sewn it and then we feel like we've got to unpick it. Okay, and then the other thing that we're going to do is we are going to leave, so that's the back, um, we're going to leave either side of that seam allowance free because we need somewhere to poke our safety pin through to be able to thread our elastic. So I'm going to just start the other this side of the seam allowance. I'm going to take my machine off a straight stitch and I've actually got my needle pushed across to the, to the left here, so it gives me a nice amount to work with. The lace has swallowed my pin. Let me just get that out. So then let's just go start, we'll reinforce this bit here, so forward and back, and then nice and steady, making sure we catch that hem down, needling our work before we start to manipulate everything. Pull the next pin out. Towards you. Going to go over the front seam now. Careful not to pull it too much and to stretch your lace out of shape. And keep your eye on the seam because it can be difficult to see where you've turned over and where you've not. for this seam allowance again to give us room for that safety pin. Press the top needle up and cut through our threads. Nice and gently making sure not to damage our lace. Here we go. So the next thing that I'm going to do now is go and get a piece of elastic. And I'm just going to use flat elastic like this and just push my machine to the back of it. And when I've measured the characters before, nine inches seems to be quite a good amount for my character waists. So I'm going to lay my tape measure by the side of the elastic and then I'm just going to trim that off. Gives us a little bit then for overlapping as well. I'm going to sew it together. And I'm going to get a safety pin. And if you've been watching me, you know I love my takeaway pots for little things like this. And you need just a little fine gold safety pin. They're the best ones for this type of thing. But you have to be careful with them because they're a bit delicate. So what we're going to do is thread our pin through our elastic like this. So we've just got that there and then if we locate our back seam where that little gap is we can poke the pin in and then we're going to start and edge that in through the waistband of the elastic waistband of the knickers but you've just got to be careful because there's so much that these the safety pin can get caught on with your lace you don't want to snag your beautiful knickers at this stage and as we start to work through, just take a pin and just pin your the spare end of your elastic to one of the seams, just so you don't lose it. Because it's very easy to keep pulling and then to pull your elastic through after you, and it can be quite frustrating. And the less times we have to go through this elastic with the pin, the better. This will just keep that lace nice and intact for us. Okay, 
So then we're coming up to the seam and we've got a seam allowance to navigate and it's a little bit easier here because we can see through it. But just keep pushing with the head and just keep trying to find your way through because you're looking for your way through between those two pieces of seam allowance and, and just squishing your seam from the top like that can often help and it has done in this case because that can just lick, go straight through now. The pin can go straight through and just help the elastic through. So this is the old way. If you've not done this before, if you hold on to your pin and then you're pushing the fabric over the metal of the pin and then hold it with this finger and thumb, let go with that one and you can pull the fabric off the back and then through the elastic through so holding on to the pin here again pushing it through the through the channel using the metal of the pin because that's nice and hard when you've got a good amount on your pin pinch the front of your pin and then you can just pull those those gathers off the back of your pin and it, that pulls the elastic through for you sometimes I forget that people have never maybe never tried to do this before and thread the elastic Works really well if you lose a drawstring in a pair of joggers or in a hoodie as well. You can use this same technique, just use a much bigger pin. We get back to the beginning again. We're going to then find our way out through the seam allowance again, which can be a little tricky as you can see. Okay, keep going. We should be able to follow that elastic straight out. There's the edge of the pin, it's got caught in something. Going through that seam allowance, I don't think that side. Okay, yes, now I've got it. Can you see that because those seam allowances are pushed backwards, it's, you, there's just no way of doing it. The only thing you could do is perhaps tack down your seam allowance first before you start trying to thread your elastic through. So let's just ease this pin through because it's a bit tight now in this gap. Make sure it's not caught up on anything. Pull those gathers around, and we can see our lovely French knickers are taking shape. So we pull the thread out, and the thread out, pull the elastic out, and then what we're going to do is release the other end when there's no tension on it, and just put those two pieces together for now. Oops. Put your pin through. Because the next thing we want to do is just make sure that we've not got any folds, and if you just follow the elastic through, through all of the channel, and all of your, your lace, you'll feel if there's a lump where your elastic has twisted because we want to have straight elastic, we don't want to have it twisted, do we? And that's all straight, I'm happy that's all straight. So now I'm going to pull the elastic clear of my lace knicker so it's all bunched up. And then what I'm going to do is just take one side of the elastic, lay it over the top of the other so it's flat, and then I'm going to put a pin in just to hold it for one second because I've not got a needle and thread ready. Okay, so needle and thread, same colour thread as we had, um, as the white we used in to stitch our elastic and our knickers. Where's the needle? Oh, it's here. Anybody else lose things all the time? Or is it just me? Right, so I'm just thread this. Do with my glasses on, and I've not got them on. I've got a fluffy end. We didn't want that, so there we go. All threaded. Apologies if you can hear background noise, there's something, there's some work going on in the apartment upstairs, so that's what you can hear. So I have just put a little knot on the end here, so I'm just going to trim that off. Now, the other thing that I'm just thinking before I actually sew this together, let me just get some through here. Because what I don't want, so I've got this and this, which is um, Fray Check by Prim. And what that does is if you, if we trim off the edges here, so making sure not to trim the pin. But if I trim off the fluffy edges of the elastic, because we don't want those fluffy edges to show through our 
um, French knickers and make it look untidy. Oops, if I can get some out. Oops, it's just dried up on the end. I have to be careful because this is quite liquid once it starts coming out. Yeah, there it is. So I'm just going to put just a little bit on the end there. And the other end, I think, is already quite nice and neat. So just put a little bit on there. It'll just stop it from fraying any further. Don't get it on your clothes, though, because or onto your French knickers, because it will, it will mark them, and you won't get it off. Just let that dry just for a minute or two. But yeah, very useful, especially for when you're doing buttonholes and things like that. It can stop things from fraying, or if you've got um, a top where it's just started to fray and you need to just stop it from fraying any further. I'm just going to take off some of those little ends. And then we'll go back to here again, lay those on top of each other as they were before while that's drying. So just be careful with your fingers. Don't go touching Luna when you've got wet fray check on your fingers because it will or your character because it will mark them just get a cloth and just wipe your fingers okay and then we're just going to over stitch about a centimeter of overlap here thread have just got a loop just pull one or the other until you find the one that it was and it was that one okay a few stitches to overlap that and it'll just hold it together for you in the elastic. There we go, that should be enough. Snip our thread off, put our needle somewhere safely and then if we just pull on the sides of the elastic of the um, French knickers that elastic should, it's quite a little bit bulky just there, help it through the seam and it should pop in to there. It needs a little bit of help, doesn't it? I mean, gentle persuasion is what I call this. A little bit of gentle persuasion, just make sure that's lying all nice and flat. And then what we can do is take this to the machine now and just close up the hole just there, making sure that we don't sew through the elastic. So if you push your elastic to the top of the channel, you should have a few millimeters you can work with just to secure that down. Oops. Just remove that's it. Just because we'll just seal that up just nicely. Just be careful you don't go through your lace. Then the only thing that's left now is a little bit of decoration at the front. So let me just go and have a look in my drawer because we now have a pair of completed French knickers and all there needs to be now is a little bow or something, a little bit of something on the front there just to show us which is the front and which is the back. So let me go and see what I've got and I'll, we'll choose together. Hold on one second. Okay, so I've had a little delve and these are the things that I've come up with. So we could have a little bow like that. That looks very nice and cute. We've got another one like that that can go on the front. Again, very nice and cute. Little pink butterfly. Nice little touch. Purple button. So if you've just got a button, you might... Oops! <laughs> I always like throwing the buttons away, don't I? Where's it gone? Oh, there it is. You can hear it bouncing on the floor. I don't know about you, but I collect, collect buttons. Got a whole big stash of those, so they're very useful. There's a nice little purple button that could go on the top there if you don't want something too fancy. Or this little pearlized button as well would look quite nice on the front there. And of course you can layer them up so you could have a bow and a button if you wanted. Again, this is your, your time to choose whatever you might like to have. Um, the other thing I've got is this little fabric ribbon flower as well. I think that's what I might use actually because that is really nice and cute. It's quite sophisticated I think. 
quite French, we're on a French knicker. So yes, I think I'm going to use that. So I've got my needle and thread here. Put those to one side for a minute. I'm going to take a couple of stitches through the lace right on the centre front panel. First, just to anchor that thread and those and then and the stitches, and then I'm going to take a stitch through the back of my bow, if you want to call it a bow, whatever, and then again through the fabric. Now the next thing I'm going to do is going to go up through the middle of the bow of the um, flower and come out through the centre of it and then back down but in a slightly different place just to catch some threads and just to be able to hold that through that down. I'll come out first I think and then I can take a bite of the garment. I think I'm trying not to sew through the elastic is what I'm trying to do but I want to actually kind of secure this bow down. So again I'm going to then come out to the side here where the ribbon leaves are. Just do a couple of stitches there and then a couple of stitches through the lace here just to hold that down and back. It's pulling it back which is good. Distort in the leaf slightly. So another stitch will just help that sit down better. Then let's go over to the other side as well. So if, if you've got a dress that your Luna's wearing, you might just need to be aware of how proud this stands because it is standing a little bit prouder than you might like. So just bear that in mind. And I'm going to stitch this side down as well through the leaf. And I'm going through the ribbon as well of the flower because then that just helps anchor that down. Sometimes these things have only got a small amount of thread through them. They're really sweet and how they make them I don't know because they're really delicate but that will just then hopefully anchor that down through the leaf. Hold it back and then back to the flower again and a few more stitches in place and that should hold that down then for us. Just press on my chop in chopping board <laughs> on my cutting board if the needle won't go through properly. A few more stitches and then I'm going to go up through the flower again just to bury my threads and I'll just cut that quite close to the top of the flower. Let's give it a nice long end. So there we go, a lovely pair of French knickers. I hope you agree. Let's try them onto one of our characters and see how they look. So here we have Luna in her lovely new French knickers. They've got a nice tight waist on them. They've got a little hole for her tail to poke out at the back there. There's quite a lot of room in them, but in actual fact, when she sits down on them, uh, in them, then they're just about the right um, width. If, you, if they're too wide for you, then all you need to do is on the pattern, is along that centered line, just pinch a piece of fabric out and just fold it over and then cut them out like that and it'll take a little bit of the fullness out but as I say you you, you know you do need some of that fullness to for, for her legs to to extend out and to sit nicely so yeah I think Luna's very happy with those and so am I so I hope you've enjoyed me today sewing a new pair of um, French knickers for Luna. I hope it's inspired you to have a go and not to feel quite so afraid of working with lace. It is fairly straightforward. You do just need that nice needle and if you have a problem because your fabric is a little bit more dense, um, then do try a stretch needle as well because that might work for you. But all in all, I think they look great. And if anybody fancies having a, um, me having a go at the other French knickers with the, um, the embroidered tool, then as I say, leave a message down below and we'll have a look at that in due time as well, due course as well. But for now, Luna's off to get fully dressed and put her, her unmentionables away and um, hopefully have some fun with Wilhelmina. So I hope you all have a great time. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please consider subscribing to my channel because between now and Christmas, I will be putting up some more videos about clothes for Luna and her friends, um, including the boys' clothes, etc. as well. So I will be working on those. And if when you subscribe, you click the notifications bell as well, then you will get a notification when a new video has been uploaded just to make sure you don't lose any, uh, miss anything. So anyway, 
with that said, I'm off to get Luna dressed. So have a great day, everybody, and happy stitching. Bye.